ma, ma. I always think of that high school musical scene where Sharpay is looking in the mirror and she's like, ma, 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 ma. Oh, my mom just texted me. Yummy, she's bringing home pizza. Welcome back to my brand new YouTube channel. Yes, I am still referring to this as my brand new YouTube channel because until this channel has been monetized and I have several thousand subscribers, it's new, okay? We are trying new techniques with editing. We are getting more comfortable talking to the camera. We are trying to figure out how long we're gonna make these videos. I have no idea what I'm doing. So can you just let me have my moment and live in the newness of this? I'm treating this as if it was a newborn baby. My YouTube channel doesn't know how to walk yet. It hardly even knows how to talk yet. I don't even have a name really for my YouTube channel. So I just popped it out. The umbilical cord was just freshly cut. And since this is a brand new YouTube channel, I still don't know what the heck I'm talking about. One of you commented the other day that I was a little bit behind on uh, a video that I posted that um, I was a little late with the information. And yeah, the truth is um, I am late with information because I work full time and uh, I do my research and things change. And sometimes I have to re-record. But you're not here for the information, you're here for me. And speaking of old news and old information, today we are going to talk about Alec Baldwin and the movie Rust. The reason this movie has made headlines across the country before its release, before production has even wrapped, is because on the set, Alec Baldwin fired a weapon that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The same bullet that went through Helena Hutchins' chest also injured the shoulder of the director, Joel Sousa. So there's a lot of information surrounding this movie and this case. And today I'm going to break it down for you all. And I promise Layla is here. She's just back in those pillows. She's really got herself burrowed in there. Maybe she'll come out at some point, maybe she won't, but I torture that dog enough as it is. So if she's comfortable there, I'm going to leave her there. Besides, let's be real. Do you actually come to these videos for Layla or do you come to these videos for me? Who is the channel named after? No, you're right. I should probably just make this the Layla show. From who is Alec Baldwin to the charges that have yet to be filed, here is everything we know about the Alec Baldwin rust incident. I don't know what to call it. The rust shooting? The rust killing? Because it's not technically a murder. Is it a murder? Whatever. This is everything we know about this case. We are going to break down today's story into five parts. First, we're going to talk about the basics, like who even is Alec Baldwin and what the movie Rust is even supposed to be about. And this incident happened over a year ago at this point, and there's still not that much information about what actually happened on the set that day, but I'm going to break it down for you as best as I can. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the legal jargon surrounding this case and exactly what is happening legally to Alec Baldwin and some other important figures in this case. Then we're gonna talk about how this is similar and different from how prop firearms have been treated and incidents that have happened on movie sets in the past similar to what happened with Russ. And lastly, as always, we're gonna talk about what's next and where do we go from here? First things first, who even is Alec Baldwin? I mean, yes, he is a pretty well-known actor. He is relatively wealthy. He comes from a big family of actors. In fact, the Baldwin family, there are four brothers. All four of those brothers are actors or producers, but Alec Baldwin is by far the most famous. He's known for TV shows, movies, and even Broadway appearances. And most recently, you might recognize Alec Baldwin from his stint on Saturday Night Live doing impressions of former President Donald Trump. Another big name in the Baldwin family is Alec Baldwin's niece, Haley Baldwin, who recently married superstar Justin Bieber. Hot take, Shawn Mendes is better than Justin Bieber. Come at me in the comments below, I dare you. Some titles you might recognize Alec Baldwin from include Madagascar, Mission Impossible, and Friends. As for this movie Rust that has caused all this commotion, Rust was a low budget film in which Alec Baldwin was playing the lead role. His role in this film was the grandfather of a young teenage boy who was sentenced to be hanged after accidentally killing a local farmer, a local rancher, actually. Is there a difference? I don't know. And Alec Baldwin's character is helping his teenage grandson run away from the law. Is it ironic that the movie is about someone who accidentally murders someone else? I'll let you decide. So now that we have a little bit of the basics of this case, this is everything we know about what happened on the day of October 21st, 2021, 
when cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed on the movie set of Rust. Alec Baldwin was rehearsing a scene with a prop firearm. The most basics of this case is that Alec Baldwin was directed to hold the gun pretty much down the barrel of the camera, and Helena Hutchins and Joel Sousa, who were both shot in this incident, were looking at the framing of the shot when Alec Baldwin fired the gun and the bullet hit both of them. We do know now after preliminary investigations have been done that the assistant director on the film, Dave Halls, is the one who handed the gun to Alec Baldwin. Based on multiple accounts from other crew members who were present, Halls also announced that the weapon was cold which typically means that there's not a single round in the gun, whether that's a blank or a live round, which in this case would be a bullet. Technically speaking, a live round is just anything that can be shot out of a gun, so that would be a blank or an actual bullet. But for this case, when I refer to a live round, we're going to be talking about a gun cartridge that actually contains a bullet as opposed to a gun cartridge that is just a blank. In fact, one of the common themes in this case is loose definitions. Like I just said, there's different definitions for live rounds, there's also different definitions for prop firearms, and there's different definitions of standards when it comes to handling firearms on movie sets. I'll get to more about those standards in a little bit. When the assistant director Halls grabbed the firearm from the prop cart, there were three firearms on the cart. And when it comes to a prop firearm, they could really be anything from a rubber handgun to an actual real live revolver that has the capability to fire a projectile. It's also important to note that on sets, even if the gun can only fire blanks, it is still considered to be a real gun. A blank is a type of gun cartridge that contains gunpowder but doesn't contain the bullet, so it's still explosive. There's still something, a projectile that comes out of the weapon, and th at close range, they still have the capability to do serious harm and even kill someone. And at first, a lot of people thought that the gun probably just had a blank in it because Helena Hutchins was presumably at a close range since she was near to the camera that Baldwin was firing at, but we do know that she was shot with a live round that had a bullet in it. This was very surprising news to a lot of people because live rounds should not be anywhere near a movie set at any time. And one of the biggest questions we still have in this case is why were live rounds even on the set to begin with? Alec Baldwin has maintained since the start that he never pulled the trigger on the gun, but the FBI did run some tests on the weapon that killed Helena Hutchins, and they have confirmed that this particular gun was impossible to fire without first pulling the trigger. One last thing about the environment on the set the day of the shooting is that just hours before Alec Baldwin shot Helena Hutchins, about a half a dozen crew members walked off the set to protest poor working conditions. Now, as I said earlier, Rust was a low budget film and workers were protesting long hours, even longer commutes, and some of them had yet to receive their paycheck, even though this was the 12th day of a 21-day shoot. And a week prior to the incident on October 21st, a camera operator complained about gun safety to a production manager. Although other crew and cast members have come out to say they did not feel this way, the crew members that were protesting felt that the environment on the set was very rushed. And now this is common in sets all across the country. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but all you need to know right now is with the pandemic, this environment was only exacerbated Exacerbated. exacerbated, is that a word? Exaggerated? This environment was only made worse. The set environment was even more rushed with COVID protocols pushing back release dates. And even earlier, the same week Helena Hutchins died, Alec Baldwin's stunt double accidentally fired two live rounds from a gun that he was told was cold, which in this scenario meant there was not anything in the gun not blanks and not live rounds. The stunt double did only fire blanks, but after the incident, a lot of crew members were very upset. They wanted an investigation into the incident to take place and they wanted to have safety meetings because they knew the sheer danger behind not knowing whether or not a weapon is loaded with ammunition. 
But because of these said COVID protocols and the overall rush environment of the set, there was no time to even address the incident. Members from the production company that's behind Rust have said that they did not know that these concerns were going on. But a lot of people are looking to Alec Baldwin as responsible because not only was he the lead role in this film, he was also a producer. So let's talk a little bit about the legal issues in this case. And before we get started, I need you to know that even though these charges have been announced, they have not been formally filed yet. But last week, it was announced that prosecutors plan to charge both Alec Baldwin and Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was the armorer on the set of Rust, with two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter is the accidental killing of another person, but it must involve some sort of negligence. So an example of involuntary manslaughter would be you're driving while intoxicated and you cause a deadly crash. Or if there was a death on a ride at the carnival and the carnival operator did not properly ensure that everyone was secured to the ride before starting it. We also know now that the assistant director, David Hulse, who handed the weapon to Alec Baldwin that day, he has signed a plea deal. He pled no contest and he now has six months of probation. You might have heard that late last year there was a settlement between the production company behind Rust and the family of Helena Hutchins. Helena left behind a son who is now 10 years old and her husband. Although the exact terms of the settlement were not released to the public, we do know that Helena's husband was named to be an executive producer on the film moving forward. There are several different different people suing each other here. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed was the armorer. She is now suing the company who supplied the guns and ammunition to Rust, claiming that live rounds of ammunition were mixed with the dummy rounds. The company denies any wrongdoing, but Gutierrez-Reed persists in the fact that she did not know any live rounds were in that gun, and she did not know that any live rounds were even on the set. She has no idea how they got there. If either Baldwin or Gutierrez-Reed are convicted in in this case, there are two levels of the involuntary manslaughter counts. The first level would result in a potential eight-month sentence and a $5,000 fine. The second level of the involuntary manslaughter charge has an added firearm enhancement, which means that the minimum sentence, if convicted, is five years in jail. And yes, this is all a very big deal. No one, no one should risk death while they're at their workplace, no matter where you work. I mean, yes, some jobs have higher risk than others, but your workplace should provide proper safety protocols to keep you out of harm's way as best as possible. But this is not the first instance of someone dying on a movie or television set, and it's definitely not the first instance of improper safety protocol. So let's talk a little bit about how what happened on the Rust movie set is different from other instances and other complaints we've seen from other productions. There are a lot of questions about not only what the safety standard on the movie set of Rust was, but also what the industry standard was. Essentially, the basics are that no one should be handed a firearm without first being trained in proper safety and how to handle said firearm. The responsibility for checking weapons and making sure they are empty or only filled with blanks is supposed to fall on the prop master or the armorer, which in this case would have been Hannah Gutierrez Reed. In most cases, the standard protocol is that the armorer or the weapons handler will actually open the gun before handling it to the actor or performer to show that the weapon is indeed empty. But again, that's another added step that takes away even more time from production. So overall, approaches to firearm safety vary greatly from set to set. Hi, Mom. <coughs> also, it's important to note that weapons handlers slash armorers are relatively recent position on movie sets. They only date back to as early as the 1980s. Before this, the prop master would handle it, but it was considered important enough to have a special position made. Armorers are responsible for choosing weapons from the time period that the movie is taking place. They also take care of the weapons and they make sure that they are used properly, that the technique is correct for the time period. And most importantly, armorers and weapons handlers are responsible for making sure the weapons are being used safely. In this case, a lot of people are like, why would you even 
aim a weapon at a human being on a movie set. But that's not uncommon. I'm sure you can think of a movie where the gun was pointed directly at the camera lens. And if it's pointed directly at a camera lens, odds are it is pointed pretty much at the camera operator. Okay, Layla has now come out of her little pillow cave so she can lick herself. Layla, stop doing it for free. You're on camera. Millions of people will see this. Do you want millions of people to see you licking yourself and not get a cent? I don't think so. And rust is supposed to be set in the 1880s, which means that an antique weapon needed to be used. And when you're using a historic weapon, it is common for live rounds to be put into the weapon at first for testing to make sure that it can even fire a blank. You need to make sure to check that the historic weapon will function properly because otherwise you run the risk of a blank exploding and damaging the gun. And Rust wasn't the only set where people were walking off to protest working conditions. Crews all across this country at the time of the shooting and even now are complaining and protesting the working conditions because when you want to speed up production, it can lead to relaxed safety protocols which a lot of people feel like happened in this case. And it is relatively common for movie sets of all kinds to use actual real weapons as opposed to a dupe or even CGI because it can often be, you guessed it, quicker, easier, and cheaper to use a real gun. And also a lot of people believe that if an actor holds a real gun, it adds to the authenticity of the actor's performance as well as the movie. Now, hot take here. I don't care what kind of weapon you're using. In fact, I would be more impressed if an actor held a balloon gun, like instead of a balloon animal, it was like wrapped into a gun form. Anyone can hold and fire an actual gun and act all serious about it. I wanna see you hold a balloon gun and fire it with a straight face. I feel like it's a win-win, more safety for everyone and a better, more Oscar-worthy performance. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about what comes next. At the time of the settlement between the Rust production company and Helena's family, it was announced that Rust filming would continue in January 2023. Hmm, let me just check my calendar. Yeah, it is January 2023. But Rust production hasn't started yet. Is it a coincidence that these charges were announced right when Rust was supposed to begin filming again? I don't know. As I said at the top of this video, charges have not been officially filed yet. Prosecutors just simply announced that they would be charging Gutierrez Reed and Baldwin. Now, some experts think that this is a legal tactic. The charges are set to come by the end of January, but delaying the charges until then can allow some time for Baldwin and Gutierrez Reed to negotiate a plea deal, as did the assistant director of Rust. Now, a plea deal does mean that they would have to admit some sort of guilt, but in return, they would probably get a lighter sentence. And they could even plead no contest. No contest is what assistant director David Halls pled and no contest means that you accept the conviction, but you don't necessarily admit guilt. So that can't be used against you on a later date. And since we're talking a mandatory five-year sentence for one of the charges, this might be something that Baldwin and Gutierrez Reed decide to do. But at the same time, both of them have come forward either on their own or through their lawyers and said, in Baldwin's case, I never pulled the trigger. And in Gutierrez Reed's case, I don't know where those live rounds came from. I am not responsible for them. Really seems like even after over a year of investigations that we don't really know. We don't really understand how this happened. We know who was holding the gun that shot Helena Hutchins. We know who handed him that gun, but we don't know where the live rounds came from. And at this point, it is still believed that Russ will continue shooting. It's just a matter of when. The one thing we do know is that they will definitely not be shooting in New Mexico where the shooting took place. It does seem like they will move production to California and they have said that there will be an emphasis on safety and that there will be no working weapons on the set and no live ammunition, not even blanks. The last thing that we do know about Rust production is that Alec Baldwin is still supposed to have the lead role in this film. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about all this. It's a complicated story. It's really heartbreaking. It is a tragedy on all counts. As much as this story in and of itself is super tragic, it also is shining a light on working conditions in the film industry overall. Some production companies have come out since this incident and said they will no longer use real guns in production, but that's only a few of them. So I want to know, do you think Alec Baldwin will even go to trial? Will he be convicted? Should Russ continue production? 
And if they do, should Alec Baldwin have the lead role? Let me know in the comments below. And before you do that, please like this video and subscribe and share it with uh, everyone you know. Layla has uh, since left the premises. Layla is anti-gun violence. Wouldn't it be really great if guns just never existed so we wouldn't have to have this conversation? Yeah, I don't know. That's Layla's stance, though. I'm not, I'm not showing my bias. But don't worry, Layla and I will be back next week. I think we're gonna move our video release dates to Tuesday at noon instead of Friday at noon, but now I'm really scared to commit to that, so I'm scared to commit to anything. So we'll see you when we see you.